Hey guys, how are you? How you doing? Please let me know if you can hear me and see. Do we have sound? Okay, great. Wonderful. Thanks so much. So uh, let's get this party started. Just a tiny sec. Okay, now much better. All right, so um, today a special uh, occasion or event on our trading room. First of all, for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is uh, Michael Katz. I've been trading uh, for the last 15 years. Um, most of my uh, trading focus on day trading and most of it uh, uh, still is focusing on uh, stocks, day trading uh, US uh, stocks basically. I uh, used to do some um, uh, Forex as well in the past. It was a great time but you can't really do everything, you can't really trade everything and I also trade uh, futures uh, mostly, if I trade futures it's mostly um, you know the famous commodities like uh, oil and um, gold but also uh, indices like Nasdaq and S&P because it's closer uh, to stocks basically so yeah that's uh, the main thing that I do and um, today I actually uh, thought about you know I started thinking of what can I bring to uh, this trading room session and there are obviously plenty of uh, things we can talk about but I actually uh, decided to take it to the more um, technical side of it not just uh, talking about um, um, let's say fundamental or talking about psychology because uh, those of you guys who maybe are familiar with the webinar I made probably a month ago on uh, trading for a living I covered that a lot of the topics that you need, such as uh, the trading plan and the um, basically the business the business plan that you uh, need in order to start trading. How much money you need to invest, um, how much um, uh, money you're going to risk, the time and the effort you need to put in. Uh, we talked about uh, the stats that you need to gather in order to find your edge, and basically. Um, in case you missed that uh, webinar, I will put a link in a second because although I'm biased, uh, that was an um, important uh, uh, webinar for all of you guys who want to make it as traders. So I'll put the link, find the time and just uh, watch it. I believe it can uh, really help uh, each and every one of you. Uh, depends on where you at no matter where you at on your training so uh, let's dive to the screen the, the charts and let's talk about uh, one of uh, my favorite indicators that I've been working with um, uh, for quite a while you are probably familiar with uh, this indicator but there's a twist to it so let me share the chart and we will cover that. Obviously, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to uh, talk about them, to uh, write them in the comment, obviously. Let me try to capture the screen. Okay, so you should see uh, my screen right now. Yeah, all right. So first of all, uh, before we'll uh, talk about the specific indicator, let's um, talk about indicators in general, right? Because indicators are probably um, the most used tools when it comes to trading, but uh, um, the problem and the main 
problem with indicators. And I've been working with indicators all of uh, my trading um, uh, career. Uh, the main problem is that most people are focusing and putting the, their focus on the indicator and not actually looking at the chart, at the price. And um, actually most, probably all of the indicators are um, just a formula of price and volume. So in your case, if you trade in Forex, just the price, but uh, let's say if you trade in stocks as well, you also have volume and volume is the, the number of shares switching hands from buyers to sellers and most indicators if not all of them are basically a combination of the price and the volume so in other words if you want to really understand um, the chart understand the technical analysis part you need first to understand the, the chart the price and after that, use the indicators just to uh, enhance the uh, decision making or the execution uh, to your trade. So basically, don't just use indicators and then decide if you want to go in uh, short, uh, long or whatever. But first, understand the chart uh, behavior, the market structure, and only then um, use the indicator to give you another twist, another um, uh, V in your checklist, on your checklist in order to get in the trade. And it's super important because it's it's very easy to just, you know, look at um, RSI or um, MACD or ADX or whatever it is and see overbought or oversold and just go long or short because of that. But at the end, if it was that simple, 99% would have made money and not just lose money. So you get what I'm saying, probably. Okay, that being said, let's talk about one of the most um, cool features that you can use. Again, after you analyze the chart, after you, after you understand um, really what what the story behind the chart and only then use that indicator and what I'm talking about is the right now I'm looking at the um, Aussie dollar and I'm going to add insert indicators and I'm going to add a moving average and what I'm about to do is just change the parameters first of all I'm going to choose exponential instead of um, simple the exponential uh, formula is just giving them a little bit more um, a little bit more importance to the close the latest closed and not just um, like a simple that take all of them uh, at the same level basically and the other option that I'll do is the period time most people use 9 8 uh, 13, 21, 20, 50, 200, but I'm going to use something a bit different. And I'm telling you, as soon as you start uh, using that indicator as well, you will see um, a major change, at least the way you find the support and resistance level. Because an, an indicator, like as a, as a moving average, exponential or as simple, is basically it's supposed to show you major support and resistance levels around the, um, uh, along the chart. Um, I'm not looking for um, like a buy or a sell signal when one crossing, uh, crosses the other. I'm just looking for a major support and resistance level. But again, only after I, un I understood what's the market structure or what's the price action telling me. So what I'll put in is 420, 40, uh, 420 and let me check that you uh, guys with me okay and take a look at that so what I'm looking at right now is a 420 indicate um, EMA exponential moving average on a 420 period time I'm at the 1A chart on Aussie dollar and you can easily see 
uh, ignore those uh, drawing here. You can easily see that the chart, that the uh, indicator playing very nice support and resistance in most cases. So here you have a support level bouncing off of it, then dropping right on the money, bouncing off again, playing with it, breaking through it, a little bit of resistance here. Again, the area of resistance, again, area of resistance. And as you can see, the price is dropping or bouncing up as soon as we reaching that level. And you, obviously you can play with it and uh, find, you know, different uh, time interval that you can work with and find it uh, working as well. Uh, for example, the 15 minute chart, resistant right here, dropping, resistant dropping until it break through that, breaking it, then look how beautiful leave a tail on the 420 dropping down resistant first let me zoom in okay so first okay so first resistant dropping resistant dropping breaking through it play with it resistant dropping um, a support holding it for a second then dropping it and only then uh, continue to the other side so basically you can easily see it can be uh, played with other time frames as well let me go to the daily chart let's see how it works there perfectly support in this area and then he kind of sideway and basically most uh, I mean all indicators um, won't be most indicators won't be efficient when it comes to sideway trading especially when we're talking about a trend obviously a trend uh, indicator such as uh, EMA although we got this resistance level and dropped but when price is moving sideways the EMA is not effective as uh, when we are seeing a trend so um, and we can probably, and I didn't check it on Forex, by the way. Yeah? I'm using it for stocks and I'm using it for um, uh, futures, for commodities and indices. We can probably see some other charts and see the example and see the um, indicator works perfectly as well. You can see it right here on the daily. Look how beautiful it held the price as support bounced from it. Resistant, 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 dropping all the way down coming back to it, leaving a tail, dropping, coming back to it, leaving a tail, dropping until it started to sideway um, the last uh, like the last few months. And one H and again I'm watching it live with you right now. I didn't test it before that because an indicator will work doesn't matter which um, uh, doesn't matter which um, you know market you will trade each indicator works for every uh, single market so you can trade the Asian market you'll still uh, use 420 and it will work and again I didn't test it but I can guarantee you that at the end um, the reason let's try to talk about this for a second and maybe you can tell me as well why do you think that 420 is working let me know in the comments below what do you think why do why is the EMA or you know what let's start even from higher uh, why is why indicators are working and after that why is 420 uh, works hey Wixie Glad that you join us. So for those of you who just joined us, um, uh, I just shared a link to a webinar I made about a month ago, really important one. So go ahead and check it out after this session or whatever you have the time for it. Let me know in the comments below why do you think indicators 
um, work and why specifically this 420? Okay, Enric, you're asking them, how do I know if it's going to bounce from it or just uh, cross it, right? So that's a good question, obviously. Um, what you need to take into consideration, and this is what uh, I mentioned earlier, is first of all understanding uh, the, the structure of the asset that you're trading. For example, you, let's take this one uh, right in front of us, the uh, USD CAD. So, regardless this uh, 420 EMA right even if I'm not really looking at the 420 I can easily say that I have a major support level right here where the red line uh, where you can see the red line since uh, we held it here broke through it held the support level went up again went down all the way to the support level so basically retesting the support so even if the uh, EMA wasn't here I know that you know probability uh, with a sense of probability I know that this is the price that should hold just because it's a major support level now this is a 1H we can go obviously to the um, 15 and even a 5 minute chart and see where they took the stop losses because a lot of if we're talking about um, a sideway topic like stop hunting right most people that got in here that bought here put their stop losses here right here so they made profit but maybe some of them left their stop losses right here because they want to make a little bit more the grid come into play so price is dropping down majorly taking those stop losses out and when stop loss is out is basically sales sell market orders right so when most people are selling the other side banks hedge funds and so on institutionals can buy and make a lot of money and this is basically what we call the liquidity uh, zone liquidity area so uh, this is a um, more of a let's say advanced understanding of price action but as soon as you understand that this is a good support level and you're adding the let's say the 420 then you get in two confirmations and not just one that is this is a support level but you also have the EMA that uh, holding as well so that's regarding your question uh, Enric okay Lucien I believe it's because it takes into account a higher number of sessions bigger data sample okay uh, as is you're saying that all moving averages act as support or resistance I mean depends exactly it depends when okay but still, I want to um, maybe focus just a little bit more on why indicators work, okay? Because again, th this is something that as soon as we understand that and we, as soon as we understand how the market work works, we can actually uh, become better as traders, as, a, as, a, an, as analysts and as executioners. So indicators uh, work because we all see the same pattern right they all uh, technical analysis works because we all see the same patterns we all see the same charts the same indicators we're using the same formula of trading some of us um, doing it uh, better than others but at the end we all see the same charts we're looking at the same thing even if you are even uh, using like a f not a fa not too famous indicator but the um, indicator that you're using coming from the chart meaning the price and the volume that means that we all see in the same picture now um, that being said when everyone 
looking at the same place and acting and buying uh, on a support level, then it's automatically become a major support level. So for example, if we're using um, a 420 indicator, or you know, at like a, a more famous one, uh, 200 EMA. So when most people are trading with 200 EMA and hedge funds are trading it, uh, tra using also EMA, uh, 200 EMA, um, institutional traders in general using also 200 EMA, a lot of algos all around the world using 200 EMA. So as soon as everyone is acting and started to buy, uh, buy or sell around that area of 200 EMA, then the indicator will work. Uh, the same as uh, pivot points, for example, if you know, um, maybe it's more for stocks actually, uh, and also view up a very, a very famous uh, indicators for stock that most people and algorithms just buying and selling around it or um, uh, you know overbought or oversold of the RSI or ADX or the MACD so all of those um, Bollinger Bands right if the price reaching the resistance level of the upper Bollinger uh, Band so basically a lot of people watching that a lot of algos watching that and they react. Some of them will short it, some of them uh, will buy it, but at the end, when a lot of liquidity come into one area, then we got a support or resistant level. And this is why indicators uh, worked before and will work forever and ever. Even though 80% of the, um, you know, of the market activity coming from uh, algos, uh, the last few years uh, still those algos are built on human behavior and basically looking for um, you know like an uh, armor or um, engulfing some reversal candle and when most algos find those reversal candles on, on a major support level a lot of them are buying the others are selling and this is what will create um, the liquidity area basically Okay, so um, yeah, so in regarding that on a one H, you can easily see it work perfectly. And if we are already here, right now we are bouncing up on the USD card, bouncing up and um, not touching it yet, but it does look pretty good to the upside, touching it at least. And from that point, understanding if the price will uh, get is res resistant or uh, try to uh, break through that level but at the end you can see that this is a great level of uh, resistance and together with the 420 EMA it could definitely uh, work okay and again, it's super randomly what I just did. Didn't prepare myself or try to find, for example, as you can see on the USD yen, it didn't work, uh, maybe just a little bit. But again, the, this one is kind of sideways. Um, it didn't work on a 1H. Let me try to see maybe a 30 minute chart, a little bit better breaking it just a tiny bit and bouncing up again support 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 uh, here it's kind of play with it so um you know crossing it and bouncing from it not as perfect as it, it did here for example where you just touched it dropped touched it dropped touched it dropped three times and then we broke through it right now so this is something that you can actually work with because when price is usually getting resistant from a level and it doesn't matter if it's a Bollinger or um, EMA or just um, you know, a horizontal level, when you're breaking through that level after several of times, then if you retest it as support, the resistance will become support and from that point, it could be a great place uh, to look for the upside. So basically uh, the first time dropping down, third uh, second time third time breaking through it if it if it will hold this uh, support level 
then definitely this looks like a great place to go long. And if we are trying to take just a little bit of the price section, simply as that, look at the drops from the 200, do the 420 EMA. Okay, this is the first drop. This is the second drop, and this one is the third drop. So you can easily see that the sellers came pretty strong here and dropped the price, but the second time it was it was much um, weaker, and the third was very weak. Uh, move to the downside. You can analyze it by by um, uh, three types of. Um, analysis basically so first of all the drop the um, the angle of the drop was pretty sharp the candles was most of them was very uh, red and big red you know big candles to the downside and the time that it took for it to drop from X to Y was uh, let's say in this case like three candles or four candles right the second um, wave basically got rejected from the 4 to, uh, 420 but look at the time much more longer it took it to uh, do probably almost the same um, move right the same drop but much more longer look how many correction in the middle we had uh, the candles are much uh, narrower not just uh, wide and red candle to the downside and um, again took it a long time and the angle is is not sharp as the first one is actually you know going half sideways and then you have the third wave from the resistance and, and as you can see it's pretty obvious first of all very tiny uh, move to the downside not really a, a major angle uh, to the downside and so on and then we can see the the nice momentum break right here uh, great Aziz thanks so uh, yeah, so if you take that, for example, this is price uh, price action, what we just uh, talked about. If you take that, understand that, and then use the um, 420 indicator, then you get in some um, real uh, uh, real trading edge. Let's let's call it that uh, when it comes to technical analysis. And again, this is what we're doing right now live. I didn't prepare myself to do so. Just, just wanted to show you how it works. So, Enric, uh, the angle is just you know. Look at it. This is a major drop, right? The the second wave is like a banana, or or like a wavish. I don't know how to call it. And the third one, uh, there is no really third wave, you know, just a tiny one. So, uh, yeah. All right. Let's try to find one more. Actually, be, uh, before going live here, I, I traded, uh, what was it? I, yeah, I think it was the... Dollar yen, let's see. Yeah, the dollar yen. I just traded it. Uh, first of all, it's a demo account, but I still tried to de um, to trade it just uh, to show you some stuff that I did and maybe understand the way uh, I think of uh, trading. So let's talk about uh, this one. So this is a one minute uh, chart and going beautifully up. So this is a one minute chart and I actually uh, traded it right from here. Let's see. Yeah, right from here. 
And what I try to do, to do regardless the 420, is just understanding again the, the price action. Because um, if I'm looking at the higher time frame, basically uh, we went sideways, tried to break through that, um, to break through that resistance level, didn't um, retest again the support level, and then something really major happened when the price went through took those stop losses right those stop losses from here and here and then shoot out so as soon as I saw that is dropping down and take it in those stop losses I tried to find my um, point where I should enter on a one minute chart this is what I usually trade a one minute chart um, maybe for indices I, I trade uh, a little bit higher like a one H but most of my trading is a one minute chart so uh, what I did is just basically starting uh, starting to buy um, and add into my position so the first one was at uh, um, it's 305 at our time so it was right here so this is the stop loss that we talked about this is the uh, stop hunting basically right here and then it, it moved up retest so basically we're moving up pulling back to the same support uh, level from here and from here so th the area of the support level so let me try to mark it right so we went down to this area just a tiny bit above it and from that point I started to uh, buy around uh, uh, those levels from actually it was from here sorry so we went down again retest uh, this area and then I started to buy around the levels just adding up uh, to this position I didn't I took some partials here and then when it uh, retested, I had two lots shoot up all the way, almost all the way up. And from that point, I covered my shorts, my uh, long. Uh, but the main idea was here. And again, I didn't use in this case, I didn't use any indicators. Just understanding, first of all, the um, a little bit higher time frame when it took stop losses. And basically after it, it couldn't um, break through that level right there is this resistance this one and this one couldn't break through that level went down took stop losses out and from that point uh, moved to uh, the upside basically so they uh, you can see it a lot even in um, even in forex uh, probably you know obviously in stocks and uh, indices as well you can see it a lot those play when they are trying to take uh, the stop basically hunting your stop loss and if you understand first of all that they're doing that and then when or where they should do that then you can try to um, uh, imitate their trading so as soon as I understood that they took those stop losses I, I, um, the probability for it to shoot higher is much higher than uh, dropping down and this is why I took the long and started to add to the position. Maybe in a different uh, session we will do some how to add to your position, you know, scale in, scale out, and all of that. So, uh, yeah, if you're into that, uh, type in in the chat box, in the comments, and let me know, and maybe we will uh, uh, bring it up next time talking about uh, how to scale into the position and how to scale out this is not just one uh, session to cover uh, I mean you can't really cover that in one session but maybe we can start talking about that so if you um, have any questions regarding that or um, yeah and if you're interested in of learning that definitely type in in the comments and we will do so Uh, yeah other than that if you have any uh, more questions feel free to ask 
And again, as I mentioned before, go ahead and check out the webinar uh, I did a month ago. I believe it can work, uh, can help very much. So, as you can see, also on a um, Aussie yen on a daily chart, look at how the price reaching the 420 and holding it pretty nicely, bouncing it, bouncing from it several of time until it shoot out. And also, um, obviously, this 420 not just coming from nothing is basically you can see and the support or resistance level became support. So with that, you will add the 420 and then you get in a little bit more uh, confirmation. Then you add in more of the um, uh, market structure, the um, the asset structure, the price section, and from there you can start uh, building basically your strategy and the execution plan. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, Lucy, uh, Lucien, um, regarding the 420, it's the same idea, the same principle um, of all indicators. If there are algos that using it, institutionals, traders that uh, using it, it will work simply as that. Now, the 420 specifically, th this number comes from uh, two years of um, almost two years of trading right because uh, you have holidays in the middles and stuff like that and um, the weekend saturday and sunday so it's about two years of trading almost two years of trading so um it's like uh, the 200 ema for example but double just a tiny bit more but again as soon as uh, traders are using it either algors or manually you will see a reaction in most cases but don't take it just like that and every time uh, there's a bounce or um, a touch of the 420 you get in or out uh, just make sure you understand the whole structure and only then apply the 420 uh, to that and see if it um, to your benefits. And again, for guys, for those of you guys who uh, trade in also, you know, indices or stocks, you can definitely use that. It could uh, work to your advantage. Sometimes, maybe even, uh, wow, look at that, how beautiful, on a 30-minute chart. Uh, Aussie CAD, look how beautiful it worked. Holding this resistance level, breaking through it, support, pushing higher, dropping down resistant, dropping down resistant, dropping down resistant. Look at that, wow so many potential trades and i'm saying potential trades because w in order to really execute a trade we need to analyze it just a little bit more but a potential definitely potential trades to take uh, uh, when adding this uh, 420 so yeah beautiful now uh, remember that for example if i'm looking at the 1h or a daily chart the, the same uh, asset let's say uh, aussie cad i might see that um, the 420 not reacting uh, as it's supposed to or at least I don't see really a support and resistance level from it but if uh, as I'm dropping or playing with the ter with the um, uh, time frame I can see that some of the time frame will work better than others now for example on the Aussie card and this time of the year or this uh, at least this month you can see that the 30-minute chart is working perfectly and this is why I want to remember that 
And in case I want to trade the 30 minute or the uh, Aussie CAD, I will go and see the 30 minutes. But for example, if I see that the um, uh, pound Aussie uh, um, with the 420 EMA uh, work perfectly on a 15 minute chart, then I need to remember that and also um, look at the 15 minute chart whenever I come to do a trade with the uh, pound dozy so play with the play with the uh, time frames as well okay great Lucien uh, boss um, I'm not really trading on a demo account again uh, you maybe missed that um, I'm trading stocks and I'm not trading MetaTrader. I just wanted to show you um, because you guys are using MetaTrader and you're doing Forex. So I wanted to show you on on your platform basically, and this is why I I did that trade as well on the dollar yen. It's not really it's not a a real trade because it's a demo account. But again, I'm not trading Forex, so this is why. Um, I did it here. <laughs> okay, Paul. Yeah, John, definitely check out oil. I actually made a couple of nice trade on the crude oil, on the future of crude oil uh, with the 420 with the help of 420 again, not just relying on that. Um, yeah, definitely if you trade uh, oil or trade gold, silver, try that as well. Uh, six dog, let me post the link here. You can watch it right here. Alrighty guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them. If not, we will wrap it up. Short session just to give you something uh, to play with the 420 EMA. And again, maybe if uh, some of you guys missed that, um, we talked about uh, on the, you know, finding and understanding the waves and uh, analyzing them as well as we saw before the breakout of the dollar yen, right? So uh, definitely go ahead and uh, revisit that to understand how you can try to give yourself, like in a technical point, try to give yourself a, a little bit more of an edge and by analyzing the, um, the moves or the waves before uh, it break through a level or break in a level. Yeah. All right, guys. So have a great uh, success in your trading and hopefully I will see you uh, next time. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye.